and then it's from there. It, it move on. So there's, we, we crept in into the economic system where you want something, not only you buy material, but you pay labor to get what you want done. So we move on from there. Yes. But of course, if you interview the next person, they might have their own concept or the way they see it. But for me, this is actually the way that I experience in it that we're going on. Yes. And uh, the, the contractors that were here in my days coming up were the late Jack Delavelle. He got a son here now he's doing, but his father, he was doing uh, construction. He was a big contractor here. Then we had one, the Madagat, the late Kittel, Papu Kittel, the Kittels. They had the were the contractors, and of course, you have others, but I think that they were about the leading ones that I know about that you could have gone work. And in those days in the construction, when I came over, what they were doing, you were mixing everything on hand. You had no concrete chop and all of that, so and everything and clean, everything you were just mixing on hand. Or later on, you get a mixer, you know, but they were doing these small concrete mixer that they would be doing that. And what's exciting when I went on the construction field with them is literally they would be pouring, let's say, upstairs, you know, to floor. You would mix it in a, in a small concrete mixer. She hold about one bag or two bags of cement for time. And they would throw it out in this trough, in this container, you know, make the plywood inside. You would shove one, would shovel it, put in a bucket, next one pass a bucket. And sometimes those buckets will go up to four different hands before they can get on the roof. And that was done with fun. Not that they were done uh, grudgingly or meanly. It would be a race. Who could pour the fastest and how much bags we can pour per day, you know? Uh, I always... The one you start to stay underneath. Because when I lift the bucket, I can pass it to you. But those boys over here, they were so skilled. They would swing it over the next one and the other one, and they would catch it. Bypass this one and the other one catch it. And what working in those days was all fun. You know, you know, you, <laughs> you're pushing out labor. You know, you can get paid. But at the time, it was fun. You know, and uh, so those are the, Areas that I met in Anguilla when I come up and then start to be among them the way that they would work and do things. Mm -hmm. Like one of the things that we've done in, in St. Martin when you come from the construction, uh, you put on your top bat suit. You don't know them. This was top bat suit. That is, whenever pants get too old, you cut him off so he become your bat suit. You know, when he's new, you go church in him. When you get a little older, you walk in him. And when he's going on to nothing, you cut him off, and that's your bad suit. Beautiful. So we would come on the bay. I don't know if the other villages, but like in Quinkers, we'd come on the beach every afternoon with be limes. Because in those days, the, the material of the cement used to be more acid because it used to be more white. If you don't get off properly, it used to even eat you. So we come on the beach, you rub yourself with lime properly, you know, your hands, your foot, everything, you rub with your lime, and then afterward, we go in the sea. And we have a special chemical that you use when you go in the sea. You don't use a coarse sand, not a milk coarse, you use a finer sand. You know, they got different grades. And you push there all over your face, your skin, your arms, your leg, and everything come off. And now, don't lower down and going cause those that live in shanty town when they come by the fish pot ocean 82 or the pier they will go across to winds and all of them had these wells in the yard now here in my area we'll go by the beach club we had about three four wells there so you'll take the your drawing bucket you rinse yourself with your water and then you carry your soap we had a Top soap, all of us had no ways to use. Uh, Life Boy, that was a top bed and soap in those days. 
she can feel good and you can feel sweet. <laughs> like, boy, uh, soap by the well, you know. And the wind's all by the well with the water. So, basically, and then you bring on your bucket of water because you got your feet to wind off from the sand and other things. So, basically, that was like the lifestyle uh, coming up in there. So, this thing are the boys on the block. They have raised in a village in an area where they've always been connected, except they do different things, you know. Instead of just sitting and idling, doing nothing, you know, making trouble. In those days, we'd walk, you'll be together, you'll come on the scene. This one, he, hey, you come here. He said, boy, I can't come, I've got to go out. I've got to change. Those who used to have their parents had cattle, they would go take care of the cattle, you know, and this kind of thing after work. And then, um, you see, when we done, on the bay now, then we go up on a well, there went, those there go, those down. Just each one had his own section. But at the end of the day, we all was on these big beaches. And that was our swimming pool. Great swimming pool, eh? Yeah. yeah. But we didn't know the value and importance of all that minerals we were putting in our body. We just thought it as the sea. We like the sea and we get in our swimming up, but not knowing the importance and the value that we were getting in those years. So life, so even though you were poor, you were, should we use the word poor? You were underprivileged and you didn't have money, maybe to think, do the things where you would dream about, what you want, but there was so many joy and happiness, you forget you were poor. You ever come to that? You forget because you're so excited what you're doing and it comes so normal and relaxing that you even didn't know you were poor. Yeah, so there's a kind of thing that I raised up in. And what I had loved is, uh, we were poor, we did not know cattle, but the other men that were working, uh, how we'll call it, like the green cars, uh, clear skinned people, they were our kings and queens. We adore them, we respect them, and we turn, they respect us. So, the men that would be taking care of their cattle, they will ask us, and that's what sense in my Angola days, holidays, Saturdays, they'll ask my mother to allow us to go with them, so, we had a sweet oil pan. Uh, it was about a gallon, not about a gallon. They call it tra-la-la sweet oil pan. Okay. Tra-la-la sweet oil pan. T-R-A, T-R-A. L-A, tra-la-la sweet oil pan. And the men, our men were, uh, what do you call them, tinsmiths. So they could they always had handles in them. They put handles in them. So every Saturday, that we go with these different people, whether to Atlant Marcel or Hope Estate, we would go with them and we'll come back with a gallon of milk, you know? So we'll have this fresh milk. And uh, it's not a question you had to buy it or he had to steal it to give it to you. It was just something normal. You take the, even these Dizong here, right in front of me, they were there, had Leo and the other cousin. They were then taking care of their cattle and land myself, and they would ask you to come over, and you'll go. So whoever you go with on a Saturday, you're coming back with a tralala sweet oil pan of milk, fresh cow milk. <laughs> so, and speaking about the fresh cow milk, one of the things that they do on St. Martin to Anguilla, on St. Martin, you make Porridge, but in those days we call it pap. I don't know if you heard that word. And we'll make pap from the mother, will make pap from the flower, flower pap, cornmeal pap, you know. <laughs> those are the pap we use. Now, on Anguilla, they will make the pap or the porridge from the guinecon, the little small little one. Guinecon, boy, she's powerful. Ooh. I, I believe my one went in my voice, that's why I don't get tired talking. <laughs> she, they were good guinecon porridge, man. And then you had other quick on porridge and so on. But I guinecon, she was a bum. But over here, it was pap. And if they ask you, literally my mother had asked us, uh, we, um, like a Sunday morning, so she get up, that they, she got me part, which one you want? Yeah, make flour pap. No, no, come, you flour pap. And for whatever reason, that was excited flower pap. You tell a child flower pap now he, he, he send your quiz and I send your flower. You can't tell him a flower pap. But in their days, we thought it was the best thing to eat. 
love Pat, but oh boy, she used to be great. So basically those are some of the